Hey everybody, it is Tanya, Thrifty Treasures. Welcome to episode 23 of Jewelry Detectives and happy Halloween, everybody. Yay. Is it Halloween? Huh? <laughs> is it Halloween? I didn't know it was Halloween. <laughs> yeah, I love your outfit there, Angie. You look awesome. <laughs> So um, this is Angie. Uh, her YouTube channel is Treasured Vintage. <clears throat> um, our special guest today is Sandy. He also has a YouTube channel, and it is called Just Sandy. And all of the links uh, for both of them are in the description box down below. So um, and go follow them, you guys. And Angie, you're getting close to 3K, aren't you? Yes, you're I'm almost here. there. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to wow. have a good day at 3,000. <laughs> So um, today we are going to be discussing turquoise mines. So Sandy is a wealth of information. So we're all super excited to hear what she has to say. And do you want to give some shout outs in the chat? Yes. I was just trying to type in hi to everybody, but this is a better way to do it. Um, okay. The, I'm going to miss the ones coming in from the bottom probably, but hi, Miranda Files, Hedron. Hi, Jill. Hi, Perla and Faye and Tracy and Maria. Yep. Carlito, she might be new. And treasure Hunters, it's Jackie or Sarah or maybe both. And Adam and uh, Marie and Jennifer and Kim Lucas and Leslie. I hope I got everybody, but we're so glad you're here. Thanks for coming. Yeah, hey, Speed Trust Hospitals. Thanks, hey, for doing this. Thanks for coming. All right, Sandy. So let's talk about the turquoise mines. Okay. Um, I have a, I'm not sure whether you guys are going to be able to see it real great, but there is a, um, a map. Let's see if I can get it up here without it. Yeah, it looks good. Let's see without it uh, shining. That's give perfect. you guys an idea of how many turquoise mines there are just in the southwest here. I don't know of any back east. Uh, they seem to run in. Uh, the Four Corners area and Nevada and um, California. So the first turquoise mine is this one right here uh, in New Mexico, right outside of Albuquerque. And um, it, uh, it all started with that. <laughs> Have you ever been to one of the turquoise mines? Yes. Really, yes. that's exciting. Um, I was looking at some videos this morning, and I was seeing like you can actually pay and go mine, like like to the yeah. public. Yes, um, I did that at uh, oh, what was it? A Purple Creek up in Colorado. Um, oh, wow. But you could only get into their tailings. In other words, what what they had already pulled out of the mine, and you could go through that. I didn't actually get to go in the mine and I didn't have any luck at all. So, Aww. you know, um, uh, some people have, have pulled out tremendous things out of there. You know, it's just, just luck. <laughs> right. So, so um, should I just go on with it? Sure. <laughs> What okay. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I wanted to um, show you guys that uh, these mines, um, they produce different colors and it has to do with the mineral content in um, the stone. I don't want to get real technical with you because it doesn't matter. <laughs> but um uh, let me get some stones put out here and I'll show you the variation of color from just one mine. You can have um, a lot of different colors. Uh, the color depends on the copper content. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So um, the, uh, 
the the more copper, the darker green it gets. So um, I've got one piece here that is white with brown matrix. Um, obviously, it um, it does not have a whole lot of copper in it. So um, I'm gonna turn you guys down. Okay. And uh, see if we can. Get. I've never heard of white turquoise. Have you, Angie? I don't know. I knew there were different colors. Right. But I, no, I probably didn't ever hear of white, no. Okay, so let me click on myself so I can see what I'm doing here. There we go. I knew there was green. Uh, what what they, all colors are there, Sandy, besides white? Um, they go from a real dark green. This lighting is not going to work. Let's see. Oh, that's, that's good. good. Right, there. right there's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right. So it goes from uh, an even deeper green than this to this. Guys, this is turquoise. Wow. Now, if I saw that, I would think that would be some kind of snowflake, obsidian, or jasper, or one of those. When I saw it, Angie, white buffalo. Oh, I don't know but what white buffalo is, but the, the difference is this has, and I'm sorry, guys, that it's not coming through real great. It's got brown matrix in it. Oh, I see that now a little bit down by the bottom. Mm -hmm. So these stones here, this is from the same mine. Hmm. That much color variation from the same mine. Yes. And that, so this that is real high grade. So the white one, does that mean there was a uh, very little copper content? Correct. Yeah. Now these, this is um, the Kingman mine, which is um, most people know about Kingman turquoise. Yeah, that's uh, very sought after, right? Right. But this pair has got a lot of green in it. Now, I've also got a piece. Let's see. It's rough, but this is also Kingman turquoise. So that's the variation that you, that you can get. Yes. What about the cracks and crevices? Can you you can just either polish them out or leave them and in a natural form? Is that what what is the preferred method of that or is there not one um i when i cut the stones i usually try and take um the divots out unless it is a nugget which is this here this is another piece of kingman oh no wait wait it's sleeping beauty i'm sorry but the nuggets i leave the, the rough in because that's what the people are, are looking for is the, the roughness in the nugget. Okay. Do, they, do they call it veining? I was looking online this morning and is that like what the little lines in the turquoise is called? Um, it's the, the lines in the turquoise is matrix. Okay. Matrix. And um, the matrix uh, will tell you a lot about where the turquoise is. For. So, um, this mine here that I'm putting out, this is called number eight. And I'll do a close up of this. This is um, very spider webbed and uh, real tight matrix. Yeah, it is. Okay, there's one piece and then it goes to something like this. Now those two pieces are quite different, huh? And they're from the same mine. That's crazy. And the and one 
spotted, so spotted like that. It doesn't even really look like turquoise to me. Mm -hmm. Come on, focus. Ah, there, there we go. Yeah. That's from that same number eight mine. Um, so you can get a, a wide variation from the same mine. Um, this, these two pieces here are from the God Bar mind and they were the most expensive that he had. Wow. Now, will you be making jewelry with those, Sandy? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I bought, I bought two pieces of that to make a pendant or bracelet and a ring. That'll be beautiful. Yes. But um, the color isn't quite showing up. But um, so to our viewers who like buy and sell jewelry, besides, you know, taking a look at the setting, what other tips might you offer uh, for people to know that it's real turquoise, like it, that it's genuine? Um, usually if it's got a real uniform color, um, it's not. Now, I have the exception to that rule. <laughs> this is a piece of Sleeping Beauty, and there's absolutely nothing in it. There's, there's no matrix, wow. uh, nothing. This, this I use for inlay. Uh -huh. It's yeah. just a raw egg blue and uh, no matrix. But normally, there will be something in it. Um, this is a piece that I haven't cabbed yet from the Ralston mine. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's going to make a really nice piece, pendant or a, a bracelet. Yeah. And then, and then you've got what they call ribbon turquoise. Hmm which is gorgeous when it's set because you take some of the host stone and you would just cut um, like a piece with that ribbon showing and cab that. What, um, what is the host stone there? Um, I'm not sure. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just got, um, it's just got um, turquoise running all through it. That's yeah. very interesting. I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. I just didn't realize it came like that. Yeah, this stuff is gorgeous when it's cabbed. Um, I'll, I'll get mm -hmm. some pieces made up and, and show you this. This is, the, I think of all of the looks, that's one of the favorites of mine is the ribbon turquoise. Hmm. So if our viewers want to uh, want to look at the pieces that you have available for sale, Sandy, where should they go to check that out? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> well, I don't have any up right now. Um, I am going to start an Etsy store. Oh, so, that'd be perfect for you. Um, good. I will post that in the groups. Okay. Um, and also, you guys, um, Sandy does auctions often, so be, be sure and subscribe to her channel and uh, hit that bell so you'll get a notification when she goes live with her auctions. What my viewers have asked me to do is to make pieces, and at the end of the video, the finished piece, go ahead and auction it off right then. Oh, yeah, that'd be really cool. That'd be exciting. So, yeah. You could, you could watch it being made. And then you could buy it. Wow. So, Michelle uh, Nathan wants to know if you have Instagram, Sandy. Um, I'm going kicking and screaming onto Instagram. Yes. <laughs> it's not that hard. Uh, you, you might as well because that, that's where it's at. <laughs> yeah. Thelma has been uh, encouraging me to um, go on Instagram. So I'm going to gonna try and... and uh, get on there and start posting this stuff. And yeah. I understand you can sell off of Instagram. See, I'm, I just don't know. I've never done that, but I understand that too. Yeah. yeah. I, 
I've heard that too. Yeah. So um, I think that's probably what I'm going to do. And uh, let me just squeak this in here. These are some Chinese turquoise. Wow. Big nugget. Turquoise, you can tell. Um, this is real typical of Chinese turquoise, the real dark matrix and um, close together. They call that um, spider web. It's not that desirable though, right? Or is yes. it? Yes, it is. Oh, it is? See, I okay. have some Chinese turquoise uh, pendants and they're or a necklace and it's made rather cheaply. Yeah. And, it, and I thought, well, this Chinese turquoise that they're saying is, you know, genuine Chinese turquoise and it's in this very cheaply made necklace metal. I'm thinking, yeah. that, you know, it's not. Well, it's probably lower grade Chinese. I was in Tucson about two years ago, uh, went to buy a just a gorgeous piece of rough turquoise and uh, it weighed maybe a pound, maybe a little less. It was rough. And I asked the lady how much it was and it was $800 for the rough. Oh my, okay. <laughs> so, um, and that was kind of mid range. It can go much higher than that. So yeah, there's, there's some really great Chinese um, it's just that, that um, people in the Southwest tend to say, oh, Chinese, you know, we want to buy American, you know, exactly. we want to buy Native American. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's where the bad rep came on the Chinese turquoise, but mm -hmm. it's gorgeous. And some of with those pieces, are they already cut to be in a place setting or will you do something else? Uh, these guys here? Uh-huh. No, I just bought them. They're drilled for a necklace, but I'll probably uh, uh, cut them and put them into to something. I usually, on the drilled pieces, I usually slice them in half, you know, right along the drill line, and then I can set them as cabs. Yeah. I love the cab look. It's really pretty. Uh. Kathleen says, I hear Sandy, but I can't see her. <laughs> We're focusing on the, the uh, jewelry, I guess, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's just the jewelry, honey. <laughs> it's just the turquoise. It's all about the turquoise, huh? I'm here. Here she I is. <laughs> I love that ring. Yeah, it's really pretty. <laughs> People will remember that ring. They won't remember me, but they'll remember the ring. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, uh, what else can we? Well, can we do we have some questions from the Facebook groups. Okay. Uh, so Kathleen Wall asks, where is Snow Queen Turquoise Mind? I have never even heard of that. Snow Queen? <laughs> Snow Queen. Yeah, that's what she asked. Let me look it up on my phone real quick. Um, hmm. Probably would have to Google that. What's happening right now, I would, uh, my best guess would be in Nevada because there are some um, turquoise mines popping up. And what it is, is that um, it's all one vein of turquoise, but people are, are getting claims right next to each other. And so they're naming their mine XYZ and the person next to them which it's the same turquoise, they're, they're naming theirs ABC. Huh. So we can assume there's an abundance. Um, not turquoise. really. Not really, because quite a few of the mines have closed down. Okay. Um, very yeah. little is coming out of the Kingman um, Sleeping Beauty oh. mines. Oh. I think Bisbee has if not completely shut down, I think it's it's um, very little coming out of there also. The 70s really wiped out the a lot of the turquoise. You know, they just mined the heck out of it. Um, Are you making jewelry with it? Right, yeah. Yeah, it was 1976 that I started um, as a silversmith, and that's when the 
the turquoise jewelry was really booming. Yeah. Um, as far as where the Snow Queen turquoise is mined, the only thing I could find on a quick search was all Elsa. All <laughs> Elsa? Elsa's the Snow Queen. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure. I would have to do a little bit more uh, research. It would take me longer yeah. to find that out. Um, do you have any uh, pieces of your handcrafted jewelry that's got the turquoise in it that you can show us? The different I, I do not. I am sorry. Everything that I've made usually just goes right out the door. Well, that's out. wonderful. Yeah, um, nothing hangs around much. I am going to make up pieces because um, I'll be on the MSP auction in November. Ooh, and I want to do just all handmade jewelry. Oh, wow. That'll for be, the nice. That'll be Maggie, very nice. Maggie yeah. Mueller says, I have a nugget necklace. How can I find out if it's genuine? My dad bought it for me at the flea market. Um, <laughs> you uh, just need to, uh, well, you could take some pictures of it and send it to me. And um, if I can't uh, identify it, from the pictures, then you would have to either take it to somebody or send it to them to uh, to know. Um, a very, very knowledgeable source is the Durango Trading Company, I believe it's called. And they have on there just a wealth of knowledge about um, the turquoise mines, the history of turquoise, the value of turquoise. Um, it's a real good resource for you guys to um, to look at. I would, you know, I would definitely tag that page and go back to it because um, just a wealth of knowledge there. The guy has been in business, I believe, for about forty years. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, Cindy. That's really valuable information for yeah. everybody. Yeah, just like me. I mean, he came in in the 70s and he's been looking at turquoise for 40 years. So he's extremely knowledgeable. Yes. Um, thank you, Adam and David, for putting those links there in the chat. I appreciate that. Uh, we have a question from Tracy and she asked, does that mean we should hoard the Sleeping Beauty that we find as it may increase in value? It already is increasing in value. Okay. Already is going up. Um, uh, Kingman is going up. Sleeping Beauty is going up. Um, turquoise in general, I've noticed, has started going up again. Yeah. While it kind of plateaued and um, people weren't real interested in it. Um, now, um, now they're... Um, coming back to it again. The uh, Japanese have gotten real interested in yeah. the So and, yeah, it's classic and timeless to me. It's always in style. So we did have another question from uh, Tracy from the Facebook group. She asked, what is the least and most valuable turquoise? I can tell you what the most valuable turquoise is. It's called Lander's Blue. And it came out of uh, Nevada, I believe. Let me look at the, yeah, out of Nevada. And it was just one rock, big rock, 36 pounds. Mm. And that was it. Wow. What did it look like? Like, what's the color? Okay. Of it? it is uh, very tight spider webs and an incredible, deep, rich blue. Oh, Did wow. you ever have any of it? I never had any of it, but I reset a piece that a guy wanted me to take it out of a silver mounting and put it into a gold mounting. So, yeah, I did have a piece of it in my hand for a little while. I bet it was beautiful. It's it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, what would the value of that of his piece be, do you think, after you put it in gold? Um, it was worth somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand. Wow! I've I've got 
this book here. Oh, we need that book too. <laughs> that, um, is really good. Let me see if I can find a picture of the um, landers for you because it is um, a famous, famous turquoise. Uh, let's see. Hedron says she has a bracelet made by Charlie Pratt. It's corn okay. ear with coral, lapis, and turquoise. It was a lucky find from a consignment store and was identified by members of a Facebook group. Wow. Okay. So let's see. You see that there? Yeah, it's really pretty. Wow. So that's that, that is Lander's Blue. The so one at the top or? The whole page. Oh, the whole page. Yeah. It's very salt and peppery. Yeah. Yeah. I pulled up a search too, and you can see how, you know, the little bitty, it's really tight, right? Um, yeah, it's it's real tight. Um matrix. Oh, this one is gorgeous. Down here in the corner. Oh yeah. And this one. Adam, Adam says, who is the author? He's gonna try to put a link in the uh, um chat. Mark P. Block. B L O C K. Okay. But this book here um, absolutely has best reference for the colors and it tells you what mine it's from. It's just, it's one of the, the better references on turquoise that I've found. Yeah, definitely. So um, if you guys are interested. Now, it doesn't have the newer mines that, that have, you know, popped up lately. Um, like this mine here out of Nevada, I talked to the guy who actually owns the mine in uh, Tucson and uh, he invited me to, to come to his mine and uh, mine turquoise with him. Ooh, that's exciting. So one of these days I might get over to Nevada to his mine and, and uh, go and get some fun stuff. Yeah, definitely. I really like that ribbon turquoise. Yeah. Um, so hey, you know, what would you say would be the least uh, valuable turquoise? Um, it's not the particular mind, mine that's, um, that really determines it. It's the quality of the turquoise. If you get a piece of turquoise and it's got very little color in it, and as you touch it, it feels real chalky, real chalky, real porous. That's about the cheapest turquoise that you can get. They take that and they'll stabilize it and color it. Okay. Oh, um, that's one other thing I wanted to mention to you guys. Um, these stones, let's see if I can, they're backed. Can you see that? There's, there's a real thin backing on them. Uh huh. And we do that to keep the stones from breaking apart. So mm -hmm. that, that does not mean that it's a poor piece of turquoise. Um, I would say probably 90% of the turquoise has backing on it. And it's just to stabilize it so it doesn't fracture on you when you put it in a ring and you knock it up against the desk or something, you don't want it to, to break apart. So. Right. I, mean, I didn't know that, but I just read that this morning about it's brittle. It says, I have a book that I was researching turquoise in and it, and it has about one of the problems with turquoise. It's often treated to enhance its appearance, which can involve waxing and even dyeing the stone. It should therefore be cleaned with caution. Turquoise is brittle and can crack or chip with careless handling. Um, turquoise can be cleaned with um, Dawn dish soap and warm water. Um, just make sure that you dry it off real well. That's really the only uh, 
precaution with that. You don't want to put it away wet. You know, you don't want to put it in a baggie wet or anything like that. But um, uh, decent turquoise, it Dawn just soap doesn't affect it at all. And as far as the waxing, um, the Native Americans, that's the way they used to polish them was with wax. Yeah. That's, huh. that's the polish that they put on them. Um, also, a natural stone that is not stabilized will turn colors. Hmm. You may buy a beautiful robin egg blue piece of turquoise, and over the years, you notice it turning green. It's because your body oils are getting into that stone and the chemicals in your body are changing the color in the turquoise. Oh my gosh, it's like mood turquoise. <laughs> yep. So it's porous and that is why yep. that's happening. Yeah, so, um, and natural turquoise obviously is the most desirable. Um, so uh, just be aware that, that you know, over time, um, the turquoise will start uh, to darken and turn turn greener. So if you see some real old turquoise that's green, nine times out of ten, it's going to be natural and very old and Ooh. grab it, buy it. <laughs> that's fascinating. I never knew that. I yeah. like green turquoise. I do like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. We do have another question, one last question from the Facebook group, and it is from Jill. And she says, my question for Sandy is, are turquoise mines found all over the world? How many working mines were there and how many are there today? Uh, great, Jill. You had to ask me a question I don't know the answer to. <laughs> but yeah, she can't tell you because we were uh, discussing how, you know, before the show started, how the turquoise mines are found all over the world, right, Sandy? Yes. Um, obviously, I showed you the Chinese, um, Afghanistan, um, Turkey, uh, the Middle East. Um, there's quite a bit of it. And um, the quality isn't any less than what's coming out of the United States. So um, if you find uh, Tibetan turquoise, if you like it, get it. Guys, it's all about what makes you happy. Yeah. Don't let, don't let somebody come along and say, ooh, that's Chinese turquoise or that's Tibetan turquoise or Afghan turquoise and ooh. No, if you like it, it's the style you want, it's the color you want, get it make yourself happy please right now um, turquoise is turquoise yeah it's like um, I say, sterling silver is sterling silver the same mm -hmm. um minerals that make up the turquoise here in the united states they're over there and they make up the same turquoise it's just found in a different part of the world yeah and i was uh listening to a video this morning on that Kingman turquoise mine. And it says that that is the mining capital of the world right there in Arizona, Kingman, Arizona. Yes. So that's awesome. It says there, um, I guess they mine it year round too. Yeah. I, they're not, I know they're not bringing it out like they did in the seventies. I just, and they shut it down for a while and then they'll open it up and somebody else will buy it. And, you know, it, it's too much for me to, to keep up on. Right. <laughs> David just said there's 120 mines in Nevada. Holy moly. Oh. Yeah. So um, that's what I was saying is somebody will have a claim right next to somebody else. And this claim is named, you know, XYZ. This claim is named ABC. It's the same turquoise. It's the same vein that's running through them. Um, but different names on the mine. Right. Uh, Cindy asked, okay, I have to know, is turquoise mining like diamond or sapphire mining? I didn't get all that. 
She asks, is uh, turquoise mining similar to uh, diamond mining or sapphire mining? Um, are you asking whether it's open pit or tunnels? Um, it can be both. Uh, turquoise mining, um, a lot of times uh, the copper mines, the open pit copper mines, they'll find veins of turquoise in there. Um, it's not worth their while to, to uh, mine the turquoise, but um, they will find turquoise in those open pit mines. Most of the time it's um, tunnel. They'll, they'll find a vein and then they'll start following that vein like gold or silver. Is that what? Uh, Let's see. What you're asking? She says, in oh. the diamond mine here in Arizona, you just go in a field and dig in dirt. Oh, um, Arkansas, yeah. Arkansas. I, no, no. It's usually um, usually in mountains, hills. Uh, so it's it's something that you definitely have to dig for. It's it's closer to mining gold or silver. If that if that answers your she says, okay, I got it. Yes, and clearly I don't know my state abbreviations. Yes, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Arizona uh, is AZ, right? Gosh, there's so many. No, I always forget Alaska is AK. Right. Yeah, I could. I could confused too but yeah i don't have to remember it you know uh the ebay does it for me right that's so. right it's like, it's like <laughs> math and a calculator you know <laughs> who needs to do math anymore right? <laughs> um <laughs> bianca's uh asking about uh determining real turquoise um i know that that you know it's experience that i rely on um, but Angie, weren't you saying that you watched a video about uh, determining real turquoise? Wasn't there? No, I was. I was going to show you a necklace that I think is. I'm sure it's fake, but tell me the how. You know, I can tell here. On am I presenting? Um, oh, here I'll present you. Um, that looks like Chinese turquoise. Tell me what gives that away. If it's Chinese, um, it would be good, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. Um, the shape of the stone and the uh, matrix in it. It's it's very similar to. Um, I should send this to you. This, yeah, it's Chinese. I'm pretty sure. Wow, then that's good. It's got. Uh, it looks like it's got a nice. A nice finding on it there, like somebody made it. Right. It's, so the class, Carly? Mm hmm. Is the I, class? You know, I thought it was fake, so I didn't even go and, and check on it. But looks like this chain is not sterling, but I think this hook is. I think the hook, oops, I think the hook is sterling, oh. but the chain is not. Yeah, um, you know, if I if I'm real confused on on uh, what it is, I usually take a hidden part, and I'll take a little uh, scribe, and kind of dig at it a little bit to see if the color is just on the surface, you okay. know, whether it's now light or not. Okay. You know, so you can find a a hidden part to it. Um, it could be halite, but it really looks like Chinese to me. The thing about it is these other beads are acrylic. Yeah. You would would you think they would put acrylic beads with Chinese uh sterling? I mean it's Chinese uh turquoise. That's a pretty presentation. Yes. Together. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Um uh, well I may end up sending this to you just to verify that. Okay. And then I, I Go ahead. <laughs> oh, do you want to show a piece of yours that well, you put? I was going to say, I think this might be how light. Are you presenting? Oh, no, you are. Hang on. <laughs> okay. 
So here's the okay. Yes. Yeah. So what is what is that's, the tell that's dyed. that's dyed? Um it's the color. It's uniform. Every, every single piece is the same color and it's the same color all the way around and all the way around the necklace is the same color. Now, um very rarely do you get a, a big enough piece of turquoise to cut something like that out of. That's now, a good point too, yeah. There's also um, something that's come out just lately. It's called reconstituted turquoise. And what they do is they crush up turquoise and they infuse it with color and um, a plastic and they actually, it, it comes in a block. You know, it's a block of turquoise. And they sell it as turquoise. Well, it is. It's it's turquoise crushed up and you know um, stuff added to it. Um, and you can get a real uniform color with that. A lot of times the hishi necklaces, you know, the graduated necklaces, chokers. A lot of times, if if they're between, well, anything under fifty dollars a uh, turquoise uh, graduated choker, I can just about guarantee you that it's reconstituted turquoise. Hmm. I never knew such a thing existed. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that, that it, it's just so, it would be so hard to buy any turquoise knowing the, knowing what you just said, because you know, how are we, how are we ever going to know what we're buying? That's right. frustrating. How about, how about these earrings? Mm, let me see. Let me. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. You were going to finish that sentence. Um, yeah, that looks like that. Um, Are we, am I presenting? Yeah. Um, that's the color of um, Sleeping Beauty or uh, oh, um, Kingman. So I can't tell. They, it, it appears to be real. Yeah. Um, I would say yes. Uh, these 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 earrings are really really cheapy tin. Not yeah. silver or anything. Uh, yeah. Um. And these are just little little like beads, three right. little beads. Yeah, and it's have holes it's, in them for stringing. Yeah, it's it's hard to tell. I would get you know a, a hidden place and scrape it a little bit and see um, if they're um, if they're colored. Okay. Sometimes it's just hard to tell, guys. Even for me, it's hard to tell. You know. Okay. I have that, one more piece. Actually, I've got several more pieces, but. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, this is one of my favorite new necklaces I got. I'm pretty sure I got this in a jewelry jar. And people told me what the stone was, and now I can't remember the, the heart one. But I was wondering about these little turquoise pieces here on the sides. Let me, oh, I'm still on Angie. Hang on. Okay, so here's the necklace. Wow. Okay. Uh, um. Can you tell if those beads have any weight to them? Because how light is lighter in weight than uh, turquoise? They feel, honestly, they feel kind of light to me. But this main, this main stone here, the heart, is really heavy. Yeah. So I would be surprised if they would mix like a real stone and then put fake uh, how light with it. But, you know, I guess I guess people do do it. Yeah, I uh, just first glance, I would say that it is dyed halite. Okay. Um, and again, I can't tell you exactly why, you know, it just, there's just something about it that just doesn't look right to me. Right. And this one, I'm pretty sure this one is real. 
and my little uh I think it's called like a peyote ring. Chip inlay, yeah. So um, that's pretty. Yeah. yeah. Normally, okay. normally those are real. The chip inlay, normally those are real. Yeah. I love that. I, would, one. I would say 49 times out of 50, there the chip inlay is real. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, Bianca has a question. She says, if the inclusions and veins look natural, can one then assume that it is real? Well, you know what happens when you assume, Bianca? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that it would be a good start, yes. You know, because it's very difficult to um, replicate the veining, the matrix in it. Um, even halite doesn't have um, the same veining. It's a, it's just a different pattern, and I can't. I'm sorry, guys. I can't tell you, you know, exactly specifically that halite pattern is this way and turquoise is this way. It's just that over 42 years, I've, you know, looked at at turquoise. I can, um, I can spot the, the difference in the veining. Yeah. Um, so Tracy asked, if I wanted to visit a mine in the Southwest, which would you suggest? Um, I want to go to the Kingman one, right? Yeah, I would say I would say Kingman because it's the most famous. And then second, I would head into Nevada and look at some of those newer mines because the newer mines you probably could actually get into to pick up turquoise on your own. Um, there, It's usually uh, a family um, run business and they're usually um, very friendly and let people in and they'll take them on a tour. So uh, that's I, and I have no idea about Kingman anymore, whether they let you um, through there or not. So yeah, I don't know. You just have to Google it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Andy, did you have any other pieces? Uh, no, but I was trying to scrape, scrape one of the little beads on it. It, it looks like a little white streak where I scraped. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not. It looks lighter. Did you polish it real quick? <laughs> no, that, that one bead, are you are you putting a mile on? Oh, sorry. You have to remind me of these things. Okay. I, I, can't, I can't see it, Angie. Pull back a little, Angie. Is that better, Sandy? The bead, great yeah. yeah, I see that. Is there a white streak on it? Can you see? Yeah. Um, probably can't see uh, it, but it looks I like can't. a little. Um, let's see. I couldn't really scrape it very good. It, it really didn't come off. Yeah. Uh, I'm see. scraping it with a dentist tool, so. Uh, yeah, that's what I used to. Dealer. So let me just do this. Um, this is uh, a piece of, of uh, Royston. I'm just gonna take a, a knife and, and scrape it. And I, it, uh, I bet you're not gonna be able to see it, but it's coming out white also. I see that, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, it really so, is. So then I would just wet it. Once you wet it, it's gone. Oh. And the color is there. Um, that's the other thing I was going to uh, tell you guys. If you run across um, uh, rough turquoise, rough stones, um, the way to tell the, the true color of it is to just dunk it in some water. And will the true color come back? Yeah, it that will show you what it's going to look like um, 
polished. Okay, let me try this here. All right, so we're looking at, at this. And now, okay, I wet it, and that's the color it's going to be when I polish it. It darkened up. See oh, from, it from back a little bit. Oh. this end to that end. Right. See this is a little bit more chalky looking, or I could do this. That's not wet, and that's wet. Mm -hmm. I can get. I've got a some more. Uh, okay, this one might be pretty good. This one here. Okay. Oh, let me. Well, that was not. But you can tell that it darkens up, and you get a better um, idea of what what the color is going to be. What what if uh, you what if it's old and the oils have gotten in it? Ah, oh, that was a really good <laughs> question. <laughs> Great minds think alike, uh, right? Yeah. Then that's what what it's going to be. It's not changing. So once, once the oils get into it, um, that's what it's going to be. Um, let's see. We'll we'll try one more piece. This is another piece. I slopped some of the backing up here, but let me try and wet this and see if, uh, if it comes out any better. Yeah, this one is. Okay. There we go. So you can tell the wet part and the dry part. Yeah. See how much better the it, the green is coming out in the wet part mm -hmm. as opposed to the dry over here. It looks kind of yucky. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a really nice green. Yeah. That's polished. I love that color of turquoise. Oh, um that's uh that's the best way to do it um cindy says she has a uh a, a turquoise mine less than 30. did she say 30 minutes or miles i can't remember miles from her house i wonder if texas has any um exciting you have to make it you know of. who was that that has a turquoise mine close to her? uh cindy loves jewelry Oh, wow. I didn't realize that there was a turquoise mine in uh, Arkansas. But, you know, it, it doesn't surprise me because Arkansas has a lot of minerals. Yeah. They, um, you know, they've got those uh, diamond fields and... Um, there's all sorts of stuff going on in Arkansas, you know, uh, in the ground. Yeah. So it wouldn't surprise me. Okay, we got some more questions. Um, do you guys have any more questions for Sandy? Put a big question mark so that my old eyes will be able to spot it real quick. <laughs> Okay, Cindy says they mined copper over there. See, remember me telling you that, that turquoise and copper run together? Yeah. So that, that's probably uh, um, where that is. So she's asking about the turquoise. Uh, so she asks, is turquoise usually found near copper? Yes, uh, the, the um, copper gives the turquoise the blue color. So if there's not a lot of copper, you'll end up with some of the uh, white turquoise that she Correct. showed earlier. Yeah, um, I don't know if you guys saw this. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, showing up okay? Mm -hmm. That's perfect. So that and this piece are from the same mine. Yeah, I kind of prefer the second one. Yeah, it's got it's got the, the color in it. Yeah, 
Um, Frankie Dennis of Texas is saying that uh, they saw saw someone around Lubbock and said that their handmade jewelry had Texas turquoise. So I'm gonna be doing some uh, some Googling whenever we get done here and see if I can find one. <laughs> yeah, um, I I don't know of any uh, copper mines even in Texas, but you know I hey I have not. Um, made that my life's mission to find out all the turquoise mines so like like david said there's 120 in, in just nevada you know um one person can't keep up with with all of that yeah uh, cindy's asking was that first one that you showed called dalmatian turquoise uh no no that um, that is um Cerios. I'm pretty sure. It's, pretty sure it's Cerios. Let me just so I don't lie to you guys. Uh, no, it's Carico Lake. I'm sorry. It's Carico Lake turquoise. Okay, let me. I'm going to tip you guys down again. This here is uh, Carico Lake, and it's got the, the variations in the color. I hear the puppies. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, anytime I start to do something, they've got to get in on the act. Mine are I, sleeping. Mine are the same way. They think I'm getting up. <laughs> I mean, they've been trying to get up on my lap all morning here. Aww. You know, so they always like to help. <laughs> um, there is also uh, Mexican turquoise. From Mexico, and um, it all of it that I've seen from Mexico has a brown or copperish color veining to it. The matrix in it, um, they're brown, so that's kind of a giveaway on the um, uh, Mexican turquoise. But it's gorgeous, really, really a nice color blue. I've bought quite a bit of it. Like I said, guys, it. Uh, you know, if you're going to go after um, the clientele that's interested in a certain mine like Kingman or Sleeping Beauty or Landers or something like that, then yeah, go after that. But otherwise, most people are just going for the color and the looks of it. So it really doesn't matter where it comes from. Can you explain this? <laughs> Can you explain this statement here that's in, in my jewelry book? It says uh, the turquoise, the word turquoise originates from the words meaning Turkish stone because turquoise came to Europe and root of Turkey. And people mistakenly thought that was where the stone was mined. Well, never mind. I read it wrong. <laughs> I need to explain it to myself <laughs> after I read it. Uh, Angie, you just had to take your hat off. To, to I know. <laughs> I had, I had my, well, it was on. That was my thinking cap. And when I took yeah. it off, I had a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. the rest of it says the Victorians loved turquoise and wore it in their jewelry throughout the century. It was especially favored by young girls because it was beautiful to wear. Diamonds were considered a stone worn by matrons hmm, turquoise was worn by the young girls then but it was by no means limited to an age group the soft unlined blue turquoise color complemented so many faces that both young and old were wore it the preferred color was sky blue which which is usually associated with persian turquoise victorians never used the turquoise webbed with matrix that we think of as southwest Turquoise is a very porous stone. Today, it is often treated with artificial resin. We already read that part. Um, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, definitely. I didn't mention the Persian turquoise. The Persian turquoise is stunning. The robin egg blue, and it's a uniform color. It has no matrix in it, and it normally is set, or a lot of it is set in um, 14, 18, and 24 karat gold. Wow. 
Yeah, Persian turquoise is just gorgeous. Come on, look at that. And very hard to get a hold of. Yeah. Have you ever had any? I have not. I have not. I just um, pretty much concentrated on the Southwest um, turquoise because that's where the uh, the customer base was. You know, they wanted the Southwest, um, the native looking pieces. So, um, but go ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. We're, we're, I'm going to start doing some fun stuff with the turquoise um, out in the shop, different stuff. Not not necessarily southwestern looking, a um, yeah. little bit more modern. So, do you ever mess with jade? Yes. Okay, because uh, Treasure Hustlers was in the chat earlier, and I think it was Sarah, and Sarah was asking um, if anyone knew anything about jade. So maybe we could have you back on sometime soon, and we could talk about jade. I know that's something I would definitely be interested Me in too. hearing about. If you'd like to do that, Sandy. Okay, um, I'm I'm not as knowledgeable about jade as I am about um, turquoise, but I do have some uh, rough jade over in the shop that uh, I've cut, and um, and I have some pieces I could bring too to ask about. Yeah, um, I know that there's a real knowledgeable guy on YouTube. Um, He's been dealing in it for a long time. And yeah. he has real good tips about how to spot um, uh, the jade. What's Who his is that? Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to look it up. I'm really bad about remembering. It's names. okay. So am I. <laughs> I should write, write these guys down. Um, you know, I mean, I'm like I said, guys, I'm not a real authority on it, but I can probably give you some tips. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, oh. I'll I'll cut some of what I have and I will tell you, you know, what it feels like and looks like and you know, we'll go from there. We'll learn together. That Thanks. sounds good. That sounds and I have um some earrings there in a it's a 14 karat gold setting and I'm pretty sure it's a uh, purple and the green jade. Oh, I remember those. Yeah, they're, so beautiful. Beautiful. they're beautiful. So um, I'll bring those and show everybody too. I have some jade pendants, like like six of them. Oh wow, awesome! Yeah. So let's get let's ladies, let's get all our jade together. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, thank you so much to everyone for joining us in the chat. It was so much fun having Sandy on. I learned a ton. I don't know about you guys, but. Um, definitely a lot of knowledge was dropped here today and um, it sounds like we're going to be able to have Sandy back on again soon so that'll be a lot of fun and uh, please go and subscribe to um, Sandy's YouTube channel and uh, join her Facebook group all of the links are in the description box down below as well as Angie's YouTube channel she's treasured vintage and um, join our Facebook group uh, jewelry detectives that's where you'll find out whenever our next show will be and right now, I can't really say when that will be. When do you think that's going to be, Andy? We're going to have to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also wanted to say that uh, I think I'm at like 420 subs. At 500, we're going to have the giveaway of the tumbler and uh, one or two pieces of handmade jewelry. Wow. So everybody Whoa. subscribe. Go subscribe to Sandy. 500. So we're close. Very uh, close. So uh, if you guys are interested, go over and, and subscribe. And I'm almost at 3,000, so I'll be having a giveaway too. Yay. Yay. For free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Well, I hope everybody has a super fun, safe, uh, have ha happy Halloween. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Yep. Thanks for coming. Happy Halloween. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Sandy. Bye. Oh, yeah.